After 30 days of wearing a continuous glucose monitor or CGM, I learned the truth. Some of these healthy foods that I was eating was spiking my blood sugar like crazy and that was affecting so many things. I used to think CGMs were just for people with diabetes, but it's about so much more than that. It's about hormones, energy, metabolism, and why women over 40 can feel stuck no matter how healthy we eat or how much we work out. And what I discovered shocked me not to mention how the CGM caused me to make some really obvious mistakes. Before we get into it though, just a reminder, I'm not an expert, a dietitian, a nutritionist, I'm just a normal mom, wife, YouTuber, and curious 43 year old who loves trying new things to feel and live better and share them here in hopes to inspire others to do the same. So today I'm gonna cover why I tried this, what it is, what I did for 30 days, tricks I learned to keep glucose spikes at a minimum, mistakes I made, and what I'm doing next. For the last five months, I have been eating a lot of protein, lifting heavy, and following Dr. Stacey Sims' advice for women in midlife. But I still had questions. Why am I not seeing much progress? Why do I get mid-afternoon crashes? Why do I get cravings out of nowhere? Why does my little annoying Hume breathy thing <laughs> say I am never in fat burn mode when I wake up in the morning after fasting all night long instead of guessing I yet again took Camille's advice and started the process of getting real data real feedback from my body and it didn't hurt that I heard dr. Sarah Godfried say I have never seen any tool that I've used in medicine change behaviors the way that CGMs do on the Huberman podcast. Safe to say that's a pretty big sell. A CGM is a little sensor that you wear on the preferably fatty part of your arm for two weeks at a time that tracks glucose in real time. I went with the Levels app because that's what Camille highly recommended and they actually use a Stello sensor that connects to their Levels app and shows how your meals, workout, stress, sleep affect your blood sugar continuously. And here's the key. It's not about being perfect or restricting carbs, which more on that in a little bit. It's about understanding how your body reacts to the food or the workouts that you're doing so that you can fuel smarter. So for 30 days, I wore the CGM and no, it did not hurt to put it on. I tracked all my meals, although I did take the weekends off. I could just take a picture of my food, upload it to the app. AI would estimate what it thought it was and then I could get in and adjust the servings or the food items if like AI was way off. I was able to put my protein goal in, my steps goal in, what other kind of habits that you want to track. You can track different macros, you can track sleep or wellness type practices depending on what your goals are. One of the things that I decided to tra track of course was my protein goal and then based on how my glucose responded to my meals, my workout and day in general, you get a score for the day. Every single morning you start with a score of 100. And then of, then of course, it decreases as the day goes on. And Level says that an optimal score is 85 and up. On average, I would say that I probably scored between like a 70, especially in the beginning, to about an 80 to 92 for my high towards the end of my four weeks. I am gonna touch on the danger of this scoring thing, especially when it comes to someone like me in a little bit, so stay tuned. But here's what shocked me. A smoothie that I thought was healthy and was packed with protein and even fiber and fat, major spike. My clean granola, I love, and I wasn't even eating a whole bowl of it. I was just putting like a tablespoon or two on top of my, my unsweet yogurt, major spike. After 30 days of tracking, a few of my key takeaways is pairing carbs with protein, fat, and fiber definitely keeps me more stable. Eating my veg veggies first and eating my carb at the end of the meal really helped me not go crazy up in my spike. Lack of sleep and stress spike glucose just as much as food does. I had no idea. Light exercise after meals is super powerful. And it may have been the reason for the first time in probably a year, I actually lost a few pounds, three of them to be exact. I also learned that although spikes aren't ideal, it also matters how quickly your glucose gets back to normal. If it takes a long time, like three or four more, more hours for your glucose to get back to a normal range, that's not ideal. But within an hour or two, hour and a half after you eat, it's back to normal, that's a good thing. I also learned that everybody is different. Like what, what helps me may not help you. And I, I, it was just such a reminder 
how uniquely made we all are and some advice isn't gonna work for everybody. With me being at a time in my life where I am technically considered postmenopausal, which is crazy because I'm only 43, I have way less estrogen. Like I'm talking in the teens. So it's gonna be harder for someone who has less estrogen to regulate glucose, which I found really, really interesting because from what I've read, this is what will cause an increase in belly fat um, and lowering insulin sensitivity. I guess estrogen normally helps your cells respond to insulin. When estrogen falls, cells become less sensitive to insulin, meaning glucose will linger in the blood longer. And this can show up as a higher fasting glucose and bigger spikes after meals. Things just started making sense. This gave me so much clarity and understanding about what's going on in here. Okay, if you remember from my interview with my nutritionist and CrossFit coach friend Camille, she told me, use levels, use the aura ring, get your blood test. I've got that video coming up next. And I was hesitant. I was like, I don't know, man. Sometimes when I have too much information, it just doesn't head in good places. Okay, one, the whole score thing, okay? I kind of you know, I started to make the score thing a goal. Tomorrow I wanna to get a better score. And I wasn't even saying this out loud. Like it wasn't telling my family, it was just totally subconscious. You know, I've, I've made it clear in my channel that I used to deal with perfectionism. It still shows up y'all, just right here, this cute little score. I wanted this score pretty much to be 85 or above each day. And y'all, it just wasn't possible and that's okay. <laughs> but you know what I did? Here's the kicker. Because I was noticing spikes when I had carbs, not all carbs, not all of them, but some, I was subconsciously majorly decreasing my carb count every day. I, I fell into the rut, not even realizing it, that I was only paying attention to my protein, not paying attention to my carbs. And sorry, yes, only a few minutes of macro talk. I know a lot of you do not like talking about counting macros because it is sometimes overwhelming and can make you OCD. And that's not like where I, that's not where I like to go in here, okay? So what I started doing without even realizing it was eating less carbs so that I would have less spikes so that I would have a better score. And I started noticing, let me get this paper. I started noticing so when I started reviewing my whole month of numbers, I was like, okay, so my average fasting glute, my fasting glucose when I first started was, so that's what your glucose is in the morning when you wake up. Anywhere from 70, 80, 82, 79. I was pretty much in the 70s and 80s uh, the first like 20 days. And then I started get 93, 95, 92, 93, 97. It's like, huh. Why is my glucose increasing? My fasting glucose increasing? Yeah, I know the estrogen thing plays a part, but it didn't make a lot of sense. So then I was like, maybe it's because I was eating a lot of carbs at dinner. And so I was reviewing what my macros were for dinner. No, that wasn't it. And then I realized, hmm, I started looking at my, my carb counts for the day. Y'all, my carb counts for the day for like the last maybe five to nine-ish days that I was doing this was between like 60 and 80 grams a day. That is not good. I'm supposed to be getting like maintenance mode, 180 grams of carbs a day, according to Dr. Stacy Sims, with you know the heavy lifting and everything I'm doing. So I was taking in yet again, here I am under eating, like, you know, getting one third of the carbs I needed. And so, you know, and I also started noticing like my chest, I would get this weird chest tightening thing, not like heart attack chest tightening, but like felt like anxiety, like I had never felt it. I had to sit down and take deep breaths. And one day I actually started crying because I'm like, what is going on? And all of this was happening while I was eating less carbs. I was going to bed like hungrier. And then I was thinking, well, I shouldn't eat this late. It's 11 o'clock, like just go to sleep. So once I realized higher fasting glucose, less carbs, you know your girl had to get into chat GPT and say, if you are under eating carbs, does this affect like your fasting glucose? And it said, absolutely. Why low carb can raise fasting glucose? If you're under eating carbs, especially in a high protein, high fat pattern common for women lifting or following Dr. Stacy Sims style plans, your body adapts in a few ways. Physiologic 
Y'all, I'm probably not saying that right. Physiologic, yeah, I am. Insulin resistance or adaptive response. When carb intake is low, muscles spare glucose for the brain by becoming temporarily less sensitive to gluten. I mean, <laughs> temporarily less sensitive to insulin. That means more glucose lingers in the bloodstream overnight and fasting glucose can rise into the 90s or even low 100s despite otherwise healthy metabolism really was so fascinating that not only did I make this mistake, but then how it affected my glucose and potentially even the whole chest pain thing. So for the last two days, <laughs> I have been eating more carbs yet again. You notice my sensor is off. I'm in a little break. I'm gonna talk about more of that in a second. My other mistake I made was being on the app too much. I mean, I probably spent about an hour a day on the app. Now, in my defense, a lot of that time was spent putting in my pictures, editing my you know, food, making sure everything was in there. Um, but I ended up having to give myself a time limit. Y'all, it's just something about scoring and perfectionism and I mean, learning too. So one, if you do this, because it has been so beneficial for me, if you do this, give yourself a time limit. It's, and two, just shoot for, I'd say 80 and up, my goodness. And it's all good, spike is gonna happen. Like I warned Camille and y'all, I did. I would absolutely re recommend levels with balance. And when I put another sensor on, I'm either gonna do one a month or one a quarter. I've got um, two more on the way right now. I feel like for myself, back to back, two, like two weeks in a row, so four weeks total, it was a bit too much. It was good because I learned so much stuff, but I could see it being just as beneficial in wearing it for two weeks, learning the things, implementing those things, then you're chilling out, you're not having to, to watch the numbers and see how things are going, and you take a little break, you revisit, see how things are after you've implemented what you've learned for a while. Another reason I would recommend Levels is because they have a great option to be able to order blood tests and labs through there. You can do um, more of a smaller package or you could do like a complete comprehensive one. I did that and they did actually say that my biological age was 34, which is nine years younger than I am, so I will totally take it. But I did end up having to get more blood work done and I'm gonna go into way more detail on that in my next video. I will have to say though, like this was so beneficial for me because I learned things in this 30 day experiment that I will absolutely take with me the rest of my life. So just a reminder, wearing a CGM is not going to be about perfection. It's going to be about learning more about your body, making small changes that actually support your hormones, your metabolism, your energy, and your health. Well, not to mention your mood because honey, when I had spikes, it was so obvious my energy crash and my mood, like those were the days that I needed naps. I've got to say after 30 days, I feel more in control of my metabolism and my energy, not because I changed everything, because I'm starting to understand more about my body and what actually works for my body. And I don't know about you, but as a young woman, like in my 20s growing up, I would have loved to have this kind of information. As a generation, as a whole, we were not taught to learn more about our bodies and experiment and, and see what works and what doesn't or try different styles of eating or exercise or we didn't have these tools on hand and so i'm really grateful for these tools if they're used in balance <laughs> so tell me in the comments below because if you're new to my channel all of the community happens in the comments below we have some amazing women who i just adore in this community have you ever thought about tracking your glucose or have you done it already if you do decide to try level, do have a coupon code in the description and in the comment below. I did decide to become an affiliate because I really, really love the product. As Dr. Sarah Godfried puts it, this is all about the enchantment of learning about your own chemistry, which I think that is such a fun, magical way of putting it. If you want to continue following along on all the things I am trying to feel and live better in my 40s, be sure and subscribe to my channel sign up for my newsletter, and I will see you in the next video. Bye, friends.